Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we're about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 291. And today is our lesson number 234, not 36. Let's take a look at this problem, problem number 168 on page number 291. Let's see what they have to say. It says, in a certain business, the production index P is directly proportional to the efficiency index E. Production index P is directly proportional to efficiency index E. And this is how we write it. Production index P is directly proportional to efficiency index E. Before we go any further, let's first understand what that means. What does it mean for one variable to be directly proportional to the other? In the plain English language, all it means is that when one goes up, the other one goes up. And one goes, when one goes down, the other one goes down. They move in the same direction. Not only they move in the same directions, but they go up and down <coughs> in fixed proportion. They go up and down in fixed proportion. For example, here's our x and y. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. And let's say 3, 6, 9, 12, and so on and so forth. Here, as you can see, as x goes up, the y goes up. As x goes down, if you move from 4 to 3, the y goes down. Not only they move up and down uh, together, but they, go, they do so in fixed proportion. Here, the proportion, uh, the, 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 the proportion that we're talking about is 3. Every time x goes up by 1, y goes up by 3. That proportionality is called the proportionality constant. Proportionality. Proportion. Proportionality. Constant. And here, we would write it as this. Y is proportional to x. In other words, when x goes up, y goes up. When x goes down, y goes down. And proportionality constant in this scenario is 3. So we will write it as this. y equals 3 times x. And as you can see, anytime you substitute the value for x, for example, if you put an x equal to 3, 3 times 3 is 9, which is exactly what we find here. When we put an x equal to 10, we'll find that 10 times 3 is 30, which is what we'll find the value of y here. Here, we have p that is proportional to e, which means p must equal some constant times e. Let's call it k1. K1 because we're soon going to use the second constant for the second one. And that's it. In order for us to be able to answer the question that they're asking, which is, what's the value of p <coughs> when i equals 70, we would need the value of k. If you would excuse me just for 10 seconds, I, I thought I was going to be able to continue it. I made a cup of tea. I left it in the other room. It will take me 10 seconds. I'll be right back. Okay, just excuse me, please. I'll be right back. I know it was a ridiculous thing to do, but I didn't want to start the tape again. I didn't want to start the video again. I didn't want to do another take. So here we go. Excuse me about that. So similarly, similarly, we have efficiency index E, which we are told is directly proportional to is directly proportional to investment index I. Similarly, E must equal some constant, let's call it K2 times I. We will not be able to answer the question that is being asked, which is what's the value of P when I equals 70, until we figure out the value of these constants. Somehow, some way, we will have to figure it out. Let's see what they tell us in the first statement. Now that we understand the question, let's see what they, what they tell us in the first statement. In the first statement, they tell us that when, when E is half, when E is half, E is half rather, when I equals 60. Well, we can use this equation right here, as you can clearly see. We can substitute the value of E, E equals half, K2 times I, E equals half, and K2 times I, which is 60. And therefore, the second constant must be 1 over 120. So we have the value of the second constant now. Now what's going to happen is that, as we use the first equation, or here's the first equation here, P equals K1 times E, I'm going to erase this thing because I need the room. 
we have we have the value of e here e we are told is half e e we know e we know is k2 times i e e we know is k2 times i from this equation right here we know the value of k2 we just found it it's 1 over 120 they tell you the value of i which is 60 or rather 70 rather they are asking us that's, that's, that's the first step and that's not the question in the question they are asking us the value of p when i equals 70 so we know the value of i which is 70 we have to figure out the value of p but what's the value of k1 there is no way from statement 1 to figure out the value of k1 there isn't anywhere statement 1 is simply not sufficient a d b c e because the statement 1 we just found out is not sufficient, we know now answer cannot be A or D. Don't ask me why I had to say that thing so vehemently. It's the excitement, you understand? One tends to get excited when one is solving data sufficiency GMAT problem. There's two second statements, shall we? The first statement was no good. I, when I say no good, it doesn't mean that it's absolutely no good. It's not sufficient by itself. Let's look at second statement. Oh, I shouldn't have used up all that room here. Anyway, so P, we cannot figure out the P. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, they tell us that P equals 2. P equals 2 when I equals 50. I equals 50. We know that We know that P, we are told here, right here, where it go? Production, there you go. Production is pro directly proportional to E. So we know P is directly proportional to E, which is same as saying P equals K1 times E, which we found out, E we found out was K2 times I. K2 times I. Since this is a constant, and this is a constant, when you multiply a constant by a constant, let's, if five is, uh, K1 is equal to 5, let's say in this case we don't have to say anything, K1 equals 1 over 20, and let's say K2 equals to be 10, so then K1 times K2 will be 10 over 120. The point is, when you multiply constant by another constant, that's also a constant. It's a constant quantity, let's call it K3, and that's I, and that equals P. That, uh, that equals P. There we go, we are done. The question was, what's the value of P? when i equals 70 when i equals 70 we're going to find this value of k3 that we just came, hit upon we're going to find the value of k3 from this information right here let's erase the first statement shall we it's just, just occupying room first statement by itself was no good and it looks like the reason i left it on the blackboard the first statement is because i thought we might need it i thought we would have to put the two statements together to arrive at the answer in my mind I, my gut feeling was telling me that the answer was going to be turned out to be C but here I see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel which means second statement by itself is going to probably do the job do you understand although strictly speaking one cannot simply go by the by seeing sensing a light at the end of the tunnel do you understand one time I was teaching a course SAD prep course that is young kids you're dealing with and I had assigned this problem, math problems, a whole bunch of them, and then I have a tendency to walk around the classroom to see what they're up to. As I approached this one young man, Michael, let's call him, and I looked at his work and I could tell that it was a fixed breakfast, as the expression goes, what he had done for the, with the problem. And I asked him, I said, Michael, what have you done? And he told me what he did. And at the end, I explained to him what had gone wrong and how it had turned into an utter disaster. He says, it's too bad, Mr. Kishwani, because when I did this, this and that, I thought I saw light at the end of the tunnel, he told me. To which I like to encourage students. So I said, Michael, you did see light at the end of the tunnel. It is quite unfortunate that you were staring at the oncoming train. Say la vie. Anyway. So back to our problem here. So this is the equation we're dealing with here. P equals P equals K3 times I. How are we going to find the value of K3? From this part right here, we are told that P equals 2 when I equals 50. When I equals 
50, which means this K3 that we're looking for must, must simply be 2 over 50. And we're going to use this information to find this P with the 70. Let's do it here. Same equation, P equals K3 minus I. We already know the value of K3. K3 is 2 over 50. P is what we're looking for. K3. We don't actually have to do it out in the exam. You understand? You just have to realize that we're done. We can figure out the value of P. Second statement by itself is enough. The answer is B. The answer is B. So K3 we found out is 2 over 50 times I, which is 70 we are told. So that's it. 2 times 70 over 50. Let's reduce it. So it looks, like, it looks like 70 over 25, which can be reduced further by dividing top and bottom by 5. And we'll find out that it is 7, or rather, if you divide by 7, it's going to be 10 over 5. If you divide by 7, you can divide by 7. If you divide top and bottom by 5, we'll end up over there on the top. 7 has 1, 5. The remaining 2 goes and joins to 0, becomes 20. So that's 14 over 5. More or less, that's your answer. 14 over 5 is the answer. You can reduce it more if you want to, but you can leave it like this. Because it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter because these are data sufficiency questions. Nobody was actually asking us the value of the value of P. They're simply looking to see if we have sufficient data. Second statement does provide sufficient data, as we said, and therefore the answer is B. Answer is B. One more time, I'm going to quickly go over as to what we did here. Here's what happened. We are told that production is directly proportional to E. From that we find that P equals K1 times E. But E we found from this statement, efficiency index is directly proportional to investment index I. So we get E equals K2 times I. And therefore we get K1 times K2 times I. I meant to put this parenthesis around the whole thing because that represents the E. This part represents the E, K2 times, K2 times I. So K1 times K2 is just another constant, K3. So P finally turns out to be some constant K3 times I. Some constants K3 times I. And using this information right here, we are told in this statement that when P is equal to 2, I is equal to 50. So we use that right here, when P is equal to 2, I is equal to 50. That gives us the value of K3 that we are looking for. Once we have the value of K3, we use the same equation, P equals to some constant time investment, and we find out what that, uh, what that, uh, P must be, what must be the value of the production index when I is 70, which is what the question is asking. It turns out to be 14 over 5. Alright? I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.